Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and for today's video, I will show you how we use Active Directory at work. In this video, I will show you the main tasks that we do in Active Directory for different types of accounts and the best practices and tips in using Active Directory efficiently. So if you're interested in this video, please keep on watching and without further ado, let's get started. So when you start working as an IT professional in a company, most of the time or 100% of the time, Active Directory and Windows Server is already set up. So you don't have to build it from scratch. So it's already there. There's already a structure for everything. So you don't need to be creating users. Typically, we don't really create users manually. So I'm going to show you how we use Active Directory in the workplace. Okay, so the first and most basic task that we do in Active Directory is to find users or find computers or assets. So the easiest way to do that is to go to the domain that you have at work and right click on it and click on find and there is a drop down in here and you have to select which ones are you looking for so if you're looking for a person or an employee account in here select users if you're looking for different objects go ahead and drop down and select that so for now we are looking for users so you can type in their first name last name or their username that is valid and it should show you the results so for example i'm look just looking for east charmer in here so that's easily how you can find accounts in here. So we do this on a daily basis or not really on a daily basis, but we do this a lot. This is what we do most of the time in Active Directory because we find users if they need their password reset. And password resets is the one of the most basic tasks that you can do in Active Directory because sometimes, you know, user forgets their password, they will open a ticket and they will ask you to unlock their password or reset your password so if you click on this user you would see the properties for it so if you're gonna reset or unlock the account if you check on account in here it will say that the account is locked and what you will do is just to simply un simply check this and click on apply and that should unlock the user's account so that is what you will do if the user remembers the password but they have locked themselves out so what if the user forgot their password and they lock their they lock themselves out so what you will do is to reset their password which is a slightly different process so you are gonna right click on the username and reset the password it's in the choices here so just type in the new password and then always check this user on always check this unlock the user's account and make sure this is also checked because this is where they will change the password to a password that they will remember and that they want to use so once that's done you can just click on okay of course i didn't type it properly but that's how you do it so 90 percent of the time that's how we use active directory another use of active directory is if we want to change anything on their profile so we typically go to to the properties in here and just if you want to change their description because active directory is tied into a lot of different systems so if they have for example moved on to another role or want to change their description just type it in here they've changed your phone numbers type it here and then just click on apply also if we are adding the person to a group for example for example east charmer doesn't have the distro list for all employees she's not getting the emails that is sent to all the employees so what you can do is to go to member of tab click that and click on add and just add in the distro list so you can type in the name if you're not sure type in the first letters of the word and then you can select which ones you need so all employees is what i will select and then click on apply so most of the time we also do this if there are requests to add people to a distro list or security groups this is how we do it on active directory also another common task that we sometimes do not most of the time but we still do is if 
the user, for example, moves to a different department or a different location, for example. So that's going to be a different OU that the user needs to be on because sometimes they have different policies and different permissions and rights. So for example, East Charmer is currently in USA and she needs to be moved to Europe because she was transferred there. So what you're going to do is you can find the user, for example, because it's easier to do it that way okay so right click on it and click on move and just select the ou that they need to be in so europe users and so if you want to check if your changes were applied just go to the ou and select on users and maybe refresh it and you will now see east charmer so if you for example have a lot of like ou's and different you no know, containers under your domain and of course it's hard to find something manually there's an easy way to check that as well so let's type in east in here and if you double click and see the properties in here you have to find for the object tab so since the object tab is not in here that's more of an adva advanced option and i'm going to show you how to add it here so you just go to view and click on the advanced features so it's going to change now and if you try and find something again also another tip if you go through this find window in here and double click there's there are still tabs that are not showing up in here because you have to go to that object or click on that object itself not through this find search in here so for example if i'm going to show you i'm going to click on the user account directly here not through find so as you can see there are more tabs in here that were added just like the attribute editor so the attribute editor also has a lot of different properties in here more advanced properties that we sometimes use in the workplace so for example you want to set like more specific parameters in here for the user or you want to check something this is where you can find it so there's a lot of different parameters in here so one way to check easily is to go through filter and go to show only attributes that have values so if you're looking for something that has values already it's going to be filtered with that so for example this display name you can see that easily and you have a shorter list so it's easier for you to find something too. Also, we use the Active Directory to check on our assets most of the time, like how our, our computers are doing because we also manage our computers in here. So for example, I've added the computer here is computer one. So if you click on that, you can also add different groups into that. For example, or in the workplace, we typically add for the laptops, we typically add like the Wi-Fi certificate. So that's actually a security group that gives the laptops automatic Wi-Fi access if they are a member of it. So that's another way how on how you can manage computers. Also, we use attribute editor in here as well to check on stuff. So if you go to the filter and show only attributes that have values in here, it will show you like really helpful information in here for example sometimes we use this to see when like the last password was set or some really important information if you're troubleshooting for example like when was the last log on or if someone has logged on to it that's how we can see if the computer has been used so there's like information that you can get through active directory as well so another thing that we do in Active Directory is creating service accounts. So just a refresher, service accounts is a very special type of user account that is used to run services, automated processes, critical system. So what is the difference between the service account and the user account? So service account provides an identity to a service or a system while user account provides identity for a person. So usually a server or a computer or a system uses the service account while a person uses a user account service accounts are being used for persistent programs that runs continuously like security camera monitors display monitors timekeeper monitors especially those that you can see in restaurants like the menu display monitors those can be very good example for the use of service accounts 
Okay, so let's now create some user accounts in our practice lab in here. So I'm going to give you best practice and tips too on how to create user accounts. So first thing is to have a dedicated OU for your service accounts that is separate from your user account. So for example, I do have the OU Europe in here, which has the users OU already. So I am going to create a different separate OU that just contains my security accounts it's easier to manage and apply specific policies on the service accounts that is separate from the user account because most of the time they have different policies okay so after creating a separate dedicated ou for that just right click and click on new user so it's just like creating a user account so just Make sure that you have a very consistent naming convention that really describes where the service account is being used. Usually in the workplace, what we do is put a special character in front. So it's easier for us to tell which one is a user account and which one is a service account. For example, I'm going to put dollar sign in here and just do auto login. So that is the name of my service account. And just click on next and just type in the password and uncheck the user must change password because we don't want people to change the service accounts they're very critical and click on password never expires also so you don't want to have them and expire especially if they're running persistent programs so just click on next and finish and as you can see here you have created your service account next very important is to add a description so let's double click on this and you should always add a description that describes what the service account is for. So I'm just going to put service account for auto login for service, for example. So at least it's well documented and people would know where to use this and what type of computers are using this. So that's just best practice in the workplace too. Also, you can go to the properties again and click on account in here and if you see at the bottom here there's a button that says log on hours and if you click on that you can actually select or restrict when this service account can be logged in if there are like services that are just scheduled to log in for example every weekdays so the service account can only run on week days and you can adjust everything on this permit or deny the login in here for example you don't want the service account to run on sundays just click on log on denied and okay so that's how you can adjust the schedule as well depending on the use of it and then click on apply Okay, so another task that we do in Active Directory is when we have onboarding or offboarding, we typically compare or mirror the permissions that the team member has for the new hire. So for example, let's go back to the users in here. For example, East Charmer or Princess Peach is a new hire. So of course, she doesn't have all of the permissions in here. So she is in the same department as East Charmer. So what we typically do is just to mirror or copy all of the membership that East Charmer has. And also, I typically just put them side by side to make it easier for me to compare. So East Charmer has more membership and Princess Peach needs to copy that. And so what I just typically do to make it easier is to just double click on all of the membership copy and then add and then paste and then check names in here and then space if there's more membership i add the other ones so double click and then copy and then paste and check names and that adds all of the memberships easily so that's what i do a lot too when we have onboarding or if someone moves into a different department or request membership and wants to mirror membership from their team members this is what i typ typically do okay so that's it for today's video i think i've covered most of the active directory tasks that we do at work which is the the most basic and common tasks that we do if i miss something please leave it in the comment section below and please stay tuned for more videos about active directory and windows server